Welcome back to Mary class. Today we shall learn about the part 2 of periodontal abscess, diagnosis and treatment. Just to revise from the part 1, we'll go through the different types of periodontal abscesses. Gingival abscess, it is a localized purulent infection caused by injury to the outer surface of the gingiva and involves the marginal or the interdental papilla. A pericoronal abscess is inflammation of the soft tissue operculum which covers the partially erupted tooth and is generally associated with the mandibular third molars. A periodontal abscess is a localized purulent infection within the tissues adjacent to the periodontal pocket and may lead to the destruction of periodontal ligament and alveolar bone. The periodontal abscess extends from the marginal gingiva apically towards the mucogingival junction. It is a result of plaque and calculus deposition leading to inflammatory cell infiltrate. It is important to diagnose periodontal abscess to provide a proper and effective periodontal therapy. Periodontal abscess can be effectively diagnosed based on the symptoms presented by the patient, the clinical signs observed by the operator, the radiologic signs and the overall evaluation of the patient. Symptoms include light discomfort to severe pain, tenderness of gingiva, swelling, tooth mobility, tooth elevation and tooth sensitivity on palpation. Clinical signs include Ovoid elevation in gingiva along the lateral part of the root, diffuse swelling or red area, suppuration through the fistula or the pocket opening, and bleeding on probing. Radiological signs can either be normal or they can show vertical bone loss or vocation involvement. They can be widening of the periodontal ligament. The patient may show elevated body temperature, malaise, regional lymphadenopathy, and elevated WBCs. To differentiate periodontal abscess from the other group of infections like the periapical abscess, gingival abscess, lateral periapical cyst, vertical root fractures, endoperio problems, and the postoperative infection, certain tests are performed like the pulp vitality in which the periodontal abscess shows a vital pulp. Periodontal abscess is generally not associated with dental caries. It is associated with presence of periodontal pocket, location of the abscess which is generally the lateral wall of the pocket, and a careful radiographic examination showing angular bone loss. Self-inflicted gingival injuries due to pencil, safety pin and nail biting can lead to gingival abscesses. These can be differentiated from the periodontal abscess by proper history taking. Certain major complications like osteomyelitis, squamous cell carcinoma and pyogenic granuloma can be differentiated from periodontal abscess by performing biopsy and histopathological diagnosis. Differentiating periodontal abscess from the common periapical abscess can be done through the following findings. Periodontal abscess has a pocket depth of 6 mm or more. It shows bleeding on probing. It shows an angular bone loss in radiograph, but absence of periapical bone loss. Treatment of periodontal abscess is important to understand as it is a periodontal emergency. It involves control of acute condition and management of the existing or a residual lesion. The control of acute condition involves four therapies, tooth extraction, drainage and debridement, systemic or local antimicrobials, and surgery. Tooth extraction is indicated when the tooth is severely damaged with more than 75% of bone loss and has a hopeless prognosis. The most effective therapy for treatment of periodontal abscess is drainage and debridement. Drainage can either be done through the pocket or through an external incision over the most fluctuant part of the periodontal abscess. If less complicated lesion is seen, the scaling and root planning is performed in the same appointment. This is followed by compression and debridement of the soft tissue wall by providing some digital pressure and curettage using surgical curettes. The last step involves application of topical anesthetics after drainage. Patient is asked to rinse with warm salt water and application of chlorhexidine gel is indicated. It is important to carefully debride to eliminate any impacted foreign body into the periodontal tissues. Systemic antimicrobials are given as short courses of therapy. They can either be used as a sole treatment or they can be used as adjunctive therapy. It is given as a sole therapy when infection is not localized or adequate drainage cannot be ascertained. Systemic antimicrobials are used as adjunctive treatment when systemic involvement is evident. Amoxicillin is the most effective antimicrobial against periodontal abscess. It is given as a 1 gram loading dose 
followed by 500 mg three times a day for three days. The patient is re-evaluated after three days. In case of allergy to penicillin drugs, clindamycin or azithromycin can be given for three days. Metronidazole has been seen to be effective against periodontal abscess. That's because it is effective against the gram-negative microorganisms present in the periodontal abscess. A combination of amoxicillin and clavulanate has been effective against periodontal abscess. It should be remembered that duration of therapy should be restricted to the duration of the acute lesion, which is normally 2 to 3 days. Surgery is performed in case of chronic abscess after scaling and root planing. Surgical treatment is provided when deep vertical pockets and furcation involvement is evident. This is a clinical picture representing the periodontal abscess associated with the pocket depth. After giving vertical releasing incisions, proper debridement of this area is performed and the flaps are sutured back. Post healing, the color, contour and size of gingiva is restored back to normal. Coming to the treatment of gingival abscesses. Immediate removal of the cause is the most important part. This is performed by giving local or topical anesthesia. Scaling and root planing is performed to establish drainage and remove any kind of microbial deposits. In case of acute conditions, fluctuant area is incised with a number 15 scalpel blade. A gentle digital pressure is applied over the area and removal of any causative materials performed. This is followed by irrigation and moist cause light pressure application. The patient is discharged at this stage. The patient is asked to rinse warm salt water every 2 hours and the scaling is completed after 24 hours. And finally the treatment of pericoronal abscess. Management of the acute phase of pericoronal abscess is important. It is performed by giving local or topical anesthesia. Gently lifting the soft tissue operculum with a curate releases the pressure and gentle irrigation with sterile saline is followed. Systemic antibiotics are instilled if there is regional swelling, lymphadenopathy, or systemic signs like fever and malaise. So to summarize the topic of periodontal abscess, it is a localized purulent collection of pus. It contains bacteria, living and dead PMNs, dead cells of the tissues. Diagnosis of periodontal abscess can be achieved by proper knowledge of the symptoms, clinical signs, radiologic signs and the overall findings. Periodontal abscess can be treated by incision and drainage, systemic antibiotics, surgery or tooth extraction. Gingival abscesses are treated by immediate removal of the cause and incision and drainage if needed. A pericoronal abscess is treated by gentle irrigation with saline and antibiotics if needed. You can find the link to the MCQs for this topic in the description of the video. So thank you for watching the video. We hope you liked it and if you did, please subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video. Till then, stay healthy and have an amazing week.